Hey guys, um, today I want to talk about a pretty big um, dieting method in the bodybuilding world today, which is um, if it fits your macros. Um, it's very popular in more recent years. Um, uh, there's a lot of reasons I don't like it. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it doesn't work. Uh, that's not it at all, because we know it does work. Eating less works, plain and simple. But I want to talk about how you eating less is what will severely alter your body. Sorry, not you eating less. The what you eat is what will severely alter your body composition. You know how much fat you're losing, or if you're going to lose a whole bunch of muscle and keep a lot of your fat, or if you're going to gain a lot of fat or gain a lot of muscle. Um, and it also affects uh, the rate you will lose fat and even the rate you will build muscle. So, um, all right, let's jump right into it here. Um, just going based off some of my notes here to make it easier. Um, so yeah, um, let's look at the reasons why um, if it fits your macro will affect your body comp. Let's say you are replacing, um, I don't know, 50, 50 grams or let's see. Um, let's say you're going to replace 50 grams of your carbs with, uh, a, you know, some type of pastry or sugar drink or, you know, just whatever you want. Um, you, you'll see this a lot more in actually people who are bulking, replace more of their carbs with junk because they think you get whatever. Or even people cutting, you know, they like an intra workout drink. So they'll use something, you know, just, you know, some type of dextrose uh, mixed drink. So the big issue with that is let's compare it to potato, 50 grams of carbs from potato. 50 grams of carbs from potato will give you 900 milligrams of potassium. 50 grams of carbs from some sugar like drink or pastry or even white bread will give you little to extremely or none to extremely little potassium. That even goes for rice. You'll get very little uh, potassium for rice. Uh, what's the issue with swapping out your carbs or something that gives very low potassium, for example? Well, the issue with that is one, it, this this is actually in a study. They showed sedentary people and professional athletes and amateur athletes as well. So not just, you know, your average everyday Joe. They only got about 50% or less of their uh, RDA or potassium. And again, when you're an athlete, you're going to require more than the RDA of potassium as well. Um, because usually because you're eating more exercise and, uh, you're trying to build muscle. So what's the issue with lacking in potassium? Well, for one potassium for every single gram of, um, carb you eat, you know, to restore glycogen to, to store it period, you require a specific amount of water with, um, every single gram of uh, glucose or whatever carb you eat to store it in the muscle. What many people don't know is that you require an exact amount of potassium for every single gram of sugar, carb, whatever you eat to also store it. So if you're eating 800 grams of carbs and you know, you're eating the exact amount of water you need with it, you are not going to store that all. You are only going to store as much potassium that you have to store it. Um, another side part about this, every single person I tell to up their potassium get the required amount they need for their carbs in their body, they automatically see a massive shoot in weight increase and they look immensely fuller and harder just because they're finally storing all the extra carbs that they're eating. So many times people keep upping their carbs, hoping to get fuller, but they don't necessarily get fuller because they're not eating enough um, potassium to actually store those carbs. So they eat more carbs and they get a little bit more potassium so they can store a little bit more, but they're really overshooting on the carbs, just trying to make up the potassium. Uh, this matters a lot for naturals as well. Low potassium, um, low potassium in your diet leads to uh, less testosterone. Um, it's needed for IGF-1 conversion. It's needed for insulin production and insulin sensitivity. So your gains are going to lack all, all around. If you're not maximally storing your glycogen, your body will focus on glycogen rep uh, replenishing first. You won't be as, sen as sensitive to insulin, as much insulin production as you could have for muscle growth, less IGF-1, less testosterone. So you, you being a person who likely doesn't eat enough potassium as is, you are also not you're not you're also going to hurt your muscle growth and your fat loss via it affecting hormones and not replenishing glycogen and insulin production and everything else so you eating just whatever you want whether it's for 50 100 gram carbs you know whatever you might be doing if you follow an if it fits your macro dieting you are hurting your fat loss you're hurting your health and you're hurting your uh, muscle gain um 
So next nutrient here, since uh, there is a fair few uh, <laughs> nutrients that you know you'll be lacking out on. Um, actually, this one's a little bit different. It, it, it's your fat specifically. Uh, the big issue with this is, pe you know, people say just eat. Eat whatever you want as long as you you hit your fat target, right? You eating olive oil versus um, sunflower oil isn't going to affect your body comp at all, which is furthest thing from the truth. So there's multiple different studies here, and it's not just the type of fat. It's actually the specific fatty acids that make up the fat as well. So if somebody says it doesn't matter whether you're getting mono, uh, 20 grams of monofats or polyunsaturated fats. They are completely wrong. And again, there are multiple studies on this. Uh, one great study where they increased people's calories by 750 calories a day, either via uh, sunflower, I think it was a safflower or sunflower uh, seed oil, a polyunsaturated fat, and versus, um, um, a, was it a, a monosaturate in, a, I believe it was a, a mono or a saturated fat, I can't remember if it was both, either way there's multiple studies showing this, um, I believe actually it was saturated from palm oil. So what they showed was that the, the, the palm oil group gained almost entirely fat from all of their weight gain while the polyunsaturated fat group gained almost entirely muscle which is insane it basically shows us that no matter what surplus you in you are in you have a choice whether that is going to go towards almost entirely or mostly muscle or almost entirely or mostly fat and again this didn't you know it shows that it's not so much the macronutrients that matter here it is the nutrient and the food choices because if you're eating 100 grams fat, and but you have two completely different fat food choices, you could be gaining almost entirely muscle from from um, the the fat that you are intaking, or you can be gaining entirely um, um, fat versus fat versus muscle. Sorry, guys, I messed up a little bit there. Uh, the big issue with this as well, this is why I never suggest macro diets. I I never give it a macro diet. Say, hey, eat 200 grams of this and and whatnot. Because the food choices you make are what matter, just for example above. And not only that, a lot of people will use oils. L let's say they're on a bulk. They're eating um, all their fats as, as cooked foods. They're not having oils. Or, or they need more calories, so they're adding in an oil. Versus a cut, because you may want more food, you will cut out the oils. The big issue with this is that they showed that cooked fats actually had 30% more calories in them than their um, uncooked counterparts and this isn't a food weight thing as we know let's say you're cooking up a steak you cook this or a chicken it's 200 grams when you cook it it's going to lose weight because you're dehydrating it this was this wasn't the case because you know that chicken you you're weighing it after it's 150 grams it's not the case of of uh water loss because let's say seeds example seeds are nuts you cook them and let's say if they lost some water they will weigh less in the end but that same portion uh, before Atrans, there is a 30% calorie difference. So, you know, telling somebody, go ahead, eat, eat it from oil that's uncooked or eat it from, um, you know, cooked roasted seeds, whatever, they are going to have 30% different, you know, as much fats are there are that they are eating from uh, raw versus cooked. So telling people just go ahead and eat whatever you want as long as it matches your macros, again, there will severely alter your your calorie consumption and then your weight gain or weight loss you you could be thinking you are let's say you're bulking and you're eating all cooked fats before you go and add in a whole bunch of oils of uncooked fats you're thinking oh hey i'm you know whatever 500 calories up extra and you're actually not you are take 30 percent off that whatever you add it from the fats you are that much less so you know that's a it's a huge reason why you shouldn't just count your uh, macros and go by specifically food choices um, the next one, let's see, phosphorus here. Um, this is a very important nutrient, uh, a very untalked about one. I have an article on the website explaining all of its benefits. So, um, let's see example, uh, and we'll look at the animal studies first here. Um, animal studies where they fed them exact same calories and exact same micro, uh, macronutrients, you know, same protein, carbs, and fats, but one group, they added extra phosphorus to the diet. Those animals saw more fat loss. Uh, they saw a thinning of the skin, um, the skin fat, but particularly, um, and they actually saw more muscle growth. The reason they saw mo more muscle growth was a higher uh, utilization of protein and a higher retention of the protein that they ate. So again, when you're telling somebody, hey, eat whatever you want, here's a macro plan, macro plan get 200 grams of protein a day, you are shortchanging um, 
your muscle growth highly because you maybe pick a whole bunch of uh, meats or, you know, whey, whatever you might be eating that is very low in phosphorus. When you could have picked meats and kept, you know, that protein, that protein, 200 grams, whatever you're eating, uh, but ate them from more phosphorus rich meats and you would see immensely more muscle growth. Um, so again, food choices matter here. Uh, another study, which is interesting on humans for fat loss was they had women eat, um, where is the study here? Um, so they, they place um, uh, women on the same diet, but one group, uh, they added phosphorus to it. The interesting thing about phosphorus, what they show is that it prevented um, the your thyroid hormones from falling. It prevented your, your metabolism from dropping. It helped keep, so the people who didn't have phosphorus in their diet uh, saw their thyroid hormones drop, which is, which is we know that that is um, that's what happens when you're dieting. And most people think, oh, hey, it's just because you're eating less calories or, or less carbs. So, you know, you keep carbs up. But one of the big reasons for it is that you are eating. Here's a funny thing. Generally, they won't, when you're dieting, you know, you'll eat a little bit less protein, but not too much because you want to keep it high to preserve muscle, which phosphorus is a big deal in that. But also it's because we're lowering the phosphorus foods in our diet. We see our thyroid hormones drop. So again, you eating just chicken and beef and or whey, as example, you are hurting your, your fat loss by lowering your uh, thyroid hormone pro production. So if you chose more phosphorus rich meats, you would keep your thyroid up. So again, see more muscle growth and more fat loss. Um, I just add this in here, quick tip, uh, some really great high phosphorus meat is a lot of white fish. Um, I always refer to Kevin Lavroni's diet. Um, he's one of my favorite bodybuilders. I always refer to him, especially on his comebacks when he looked his hardest, basically always, is how did he get there with his diet? And what's funny is that he ate uh, white fish six times a day, which is extremely rich in phosphorus. And, you know, that could have been a big part in thinning, um, thinning the skin fat for why he looked so hard and gaining so much muscle on a lot less protein than a lot other bodybuilders. It's because he was utilizing his uh, protein more. Um, so yeah, um, and the, the differences between Pacific meats, example, um, I think it's 50 or 60 grams of chicken. This is just off the top of my head, guys. Don't quote me exactly. It's about 180 gram, uh, milligrams of phosphorus compared to something that is uh, the same amount of protein serving, 50 or 60 grams of, of a particular white fish could be upwards, I think, 1,000 and 100 milligrams or 900. Again, I can't remember the exact numbers because, you know, I'm using different, um, you know, I'll give a different protein um, recommendations of certain foods. So yeah, that food choice alone is upwards, you know, times five more phosphorus, yet the same protein. So again, you're going to see more fat loss um, by this little change and more muscle growth. Um, next, next one here, vitamin A. Um, I recently mentioned that in another video um, for its uh, anti-estrogen effects, why somebody might be seeing estrogenic size and you might not because it's a strong anti-estrogen. Uh, vitamin A here. So there's an interesting study where they took children who had stunted growth. Um, um, and, and so the difference here, so stunted growth and stunted weight, um, they took one group and placed them on TRT and they took the other group and gave them vitamin A. Uh, the vitamin A group saw, saw a re restoration of uh, testosterone levels and they had just as my uh, as much height and uh, weight gain as the the boys in the test uh, the testosterone group. Um, and another thing with vitamin A, a, a big reason for bodybuilders needing more of it is the more protein you eat, the more vitamin A your body is going to use. So if you're eating a high protein diet and not replacing your vitamin A, you are going to be hurting your your muscle growth um, and your hormone production. Uh, well, you know some people might not be natural, but yeah, your hormone production as well. Uh, a bodybuilder diet with vitamin A. Um, the issue I see with this, with this is, you know, chicken and rice diets and or the if it fits your macros, you know, you're having, um, you know, whatever pastry, sugary drinks, you know, whatever you want to eat, you are not, you're not going to get enough vitamin A. So the bodybuilder diet mixed with um, an unhealthy diet, you know, if it fits your macros, usually you go for 10, 20, 30, whatever percent of your calories from whatever you want you are hurting your vitamin A um, intake even more. Um, another one, uh, vitamin E. So in your typical average person, not, not, not just bodybuilders, 
I discuss this in the anti-estrogen video as well as bodybuilders uh, usually don't have the best vitamin E intake because they'll use like almond oil and stuff like that um, or just oils in general where some of the, the vitamin E is processed out of. Uh, vitamin E, 80% of adults do not get enough of. Uh, vitamin E is insanely important for muscle growth, muscular strength. There's a lot of studies on this. Um, when you're lacking vitamin E, your um, animals don't grow as well. Um, it helps inflammation, which is very important for allowing your muscles to recover. Um, you eating specifically polyunsaturated fats, um, oils that are robbed of the vitamin E, um, every bit of polyunsaturated E fat that you intake will use up your vitamin E and deplete it even more. So again, why whole foods matter. Um, yeah, so in um, a bodybuilder diet, there is not a lot of vitamin E and then you go and eat, you know, f I don't know how many calories I, you know, you, you might be in exchanging for the if it, fits, if it fits your macros dieting, you are eating even less vitamin E. So you are hurting, again, like I said, your, your muscle growth there. Um, what else is on the list? Um, Let's see. Um, crap, I um, uh, forgot to add something else I wanted to talk about in my notes. Um, so yeah, guys, um, when you eat, if it fits your macros, um, generally the typical person and even bodybuilder, like I said, you are not getting um, a lot of your nutrients as is. And when you go and let somebody just eat whatever they want for protein from whatever protein source, you are you're hurting your your muscle growth and your fat loss by not getting an, enough phosphorus. You are having to overshoot your protein. You know that extra fifty grams of protein, um, thinking it's all going to help you in muscle growth, when you're really just getting a little bit extra phosphorus to help you, you utilize the protein you're already getting. When you could likely keep your protein the same and just eat better choices of meat to utilize more of the protein that you're already getting instead of bumping it up another 100 or whatever grams. Um, you exchanging your potassium, like I said, you know, every gram of carb you chuck for sugar or whatever you you, you might want in your diet, you're hurting, um, you know, you're hurting your potassium usually is one of the biggest ones I see. A lot of B vitamins when people replace carbs with junk carbs and um, junk carbs like sugar, Again, every nutrient you eat requires a lot of different vitamins to um, utilize um, that nutrient. And you depleting it is going to hurt muscle growth. Like sugar depletes a lot of the B vitamins and can actually cause um, specific diseases uh, like beriberi disease uh, by depleting B1. You know, it depletes B2, which is needed for eight, uh, to make ATP. It's, you know, it's needed for muscle growth. So every bit of gram of sugar, you're using up your B vitamins, which you're likely not getting enough of those B vitamins. Um, there's a study that showed, um, what was it like 50, I think it was upwards 50% of athletes and sedentary people, um, did not, did not hit 50% of, um, no, sorry, this was, this was, I said that wrong. This was athletes and sedentary people. They, all of them did not hit 50% of the RDA for upwards 50%. It was 48 or 50 percent. Some of these, by the way, did not hit that of their vitamins and minerals. So half their vitamins and minerals, they did not hit half the RDA goals of them. So yeah, you're replacing, you know, sugar for something like potato. Uh, sorry, replacing potato for something like sugar, you're losing it on so many B vitamins, potassium, which is for your testosterone, your IGF one, your insulin production, your insulin sensitivity. Um, like I said, the fat makeup you eating more um saturated fats versus polyunsaturated fats and it matters the fatty acid makeup of these foods you're hurting your fat loss severely you're going to gain more fat you're going to not gain as much muscle you're going to gain more fat um so yeah that is all those reasons are very big reasons why i hate it's it, why i hate it fit, fit your macro dieting you are going to gain less muscle you're going to um gain more fat you are not going to lose as much um, fat and you could be losing more muscle um, with every single calorie gram of, you know what I mean? A gram of uh, protein, carbs, fats that you replace for something unhealthy. Um, and on top of it too, like I just said, it is going to be something unhealthy. You are going to be, you know, hurting your, you're hurting, you know, every organ of your body basically by eating by eating trash food like we know this already whether it's sugar and inflammation or um you know too much fructose you know soda high high fructose corn syrup and fatty liver disease 
Um, you are just going to make your body unhealthy. And I don't know why anybody would want to do that on purpose. And you are going to get suboptimal to extremely suboptimal results, whether it's in your, your body comp, like I said, gaining more fat, very little muscle, or gaining very, very um, little muscle with um, losing, losing more muscle versus losing more fat and losing not as much fat as possible. Uh, so again, this is why I hate macro plans. I hate saying, hey, here's 200 grams protein, 50 grams fat, or you know whatever, 300 grams carbs, go eat this. I, I hate it. Um, I only like giving out food, specific food choices. So not just, you know, macros and be like, Hey, make sure it comes from this. I love giving out specific food choices because again, you eating chicken and beef five times a day versus, um, fish, you know, all the meals or half the meals, your phosphorus is going to be five times different in the amount. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it guys. Um, I absolutely hate if it fits your macros. Um, you know, obviously you want to live a little, but I feel like people that are needing to eat copious amounts of junk food to, you know, be happy with their dieting. I think a lot of that is just not enough um, cooking knowledge, a lot of it. You, you know, I always say this, like, what would you rather eat? For me, it's an easy choice when it's like McDonald's because I absolutely hate McDonald's. Like, you know, I'll eat takeout too. I absolutely do. But um, McDonald's, I hate. What would you rather? A five-star restaurant of an amazing steak and potato um, versus, you know, McDonald's. To me, that's an easy choice every single time. Um, so what I'd like to tell a lot of people is in increase your cooking skills. You know, just just go on Google, search, you know, search how to make um, great steak and um, increase your variety and try new things, basically. You know, go to the grocery store, buy every single sauce and seasoning and, you know, try it all and, and find out what you might like, you know, especially if you have a, a very um, a high taste for um for fast food um yeah try lots of new things lots of new sauces and learn how to cook it properly like if you cook a really great meal there is no need for you to wanting to go eat those trash meals i feel um having a great meal is yeah is is so much more better than um going out to, for mcdonald's for me as an example um, so yeah, Google recipes, learn how to cook a little bit better, even cooking timings, you know, cooking meat a, a little bit lower, so it's more softer and not as dried out. Um, all those things matter. Um, ma make your food enjoyable and don't be afraid of food, food and sauces. There's lots of sure. Certain sauces are jam packed of sugar and it's like, Oh, I can't have this on my diet because it's packed full of cr uh, crappy sugar. Find the sauces without sugar. Make your own sauces. Use lots of uh, spices and seasonings. And, you know, there's no reason whether you're dieting, even on an extremely low calorie diet, that you cannot jam pack full your meats of sauces and seasonings and to have something taste so amazing. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid of that. Do that. Um, learn some more cooking recipes and, you know, a, a bit better ways to cook for your own taste palette. And there's no reason you should be switching foods for, for uh, junk calories. Just going to hurt your health, hurt your uh, muscle gain, fat loss, everything already said 10 times over and I'm repeating myself. Um, so yeah, guys, um, I don't like if it fits your macros. Um, eat some tasty food and your, your health and your body will see a lot better results. All right, guys, um, thanks for listening again and uh, take care.